You ever wish you could make your quick settings panel way more useful than it already is? Well, wish no more, because with an app called Quick Tiles Installed, you can do exactly that. The app is filled to the brim with a stack of these advanced quick settings toggles, and you just enable the ones that you like, then add them to your quick settings panel, and that's it. So check this out. Thanks to the Quick Tiles app, I have a toggle here that turns on and off my phone's adaptive brightness. I have a toggle that lets me quickly enable or disable USB debugging. I have one that lets me launch straight into my favorite app and one here that changes my phone's display timeout settings. And those are just four of the options available. There are a stack more on top of those to go with. Oh, and the app is also completely free and open source too. And with that, welcome to a brand new episode of the best Android apps. And we're starting the year off with a bang by showcasing not just 10, not 15, but 20 applications. And every single one of them is not only completely free, but they're all also open source too. So let's begin. All right, continuing on with our quick settings panel for a minute. And next up are two apps that allow for even more advanced quick settings toggles. But just keep in mind, they both require the Shizuku app to work. The first is an app called Always On Display Toggle, and as the name indicates, this lets you quickly turn on or off your phone's Always On Display. And then the second is an app called Private DNS Quick Toggle, and I've mentioned this app a couple of times on the channel now, but that's because it is just so dang useful. But again, with this toggle set up, you have a really quick and easy way to enable or disable the Private DNS Provider setting, which is just so, so useful. Like, just look at this before and after. On the left is me disabling the feature manually via the settings menu, and on the right is with the quick settings toggle. So convenient. Then moving on to a couple of customization related apps, and next up is Paperize, which is an app that lets you set your phone's wallpaper to change automatically at specific time intervals. You just create a library of images that you like, then back on this wallpaper page, you select your created library, and then below that, you've got a bunch of settings that you can adjust, including the time interval for when the wallpapers should change, and there's even a few options for customizing the wallpapers too. But that's it, you can now close the app and your wallpapers will change automatically. Then we have Pi Launcher, a super unique third-party home screen launcher that has a completely fresh take on the home screen experience. So instead of icons and widgets, you'll see, well, nothing on your home screen, but you just press and hold the screen to bring up a floating pie menu of your favorite apps. You can then tap to launch an app drawer filled with all of your apps, and you can also access the settings via this page. All right, moving into some utility-based applications, and Cantar is a really neat app that lets you uninstall bloatware from your phone. With the app open, you'll see a list of every single app installed on your phone, including system apps, and you just select whichever app you wanna uninstall, then tap the trash can icon, and that's it. And if you've accidentally uninstalled an app that you didn't mean to, then you can also come over to this tab to quickly restore it. And man, I remember the days when we needed computers to uninstall bloatware. So the fact that we can use just a simple app like Cantor now, it is seriously amazing. And then whilst Cantor lets you uninstall apps, Install With Options is an app that helps you with installing them, but not your regular Play Store available apps, but rather apps that you might be trying to sideload. So with the app set up, you'll see a long list of options that'll give you more control over any APKs that you're looking to install, such as the option to bypass Android 14's target SDK limit, meaning you can install apps that are outdated and normally don't work. You can even downgrade certain app packages or get the app to grant all requested permissions automatically immediately after it's installed. Plus there's a bunch of other options as well. Then we have Saver Tuner, which is a really handy app that gives you way more control over your phone's battery saver options. The app has a range of these pre-built profiles that you can choose from, depending on how aggressive you want the battery saving to be, but you can then adjust all of these settings down here as much as you like for even more control. And you'll be surprised at just how many tweaks you can make, all of which have the potential to seriously improve how long your phone's battery lasts for. Then we have an app called File Navigator. And if your downloads folder looks a little something like this, well, by using File Navigator, you can make it look like this instead. It essentially lets you set up rules, which will then dictate where specific file types should get moved to on your phone. So I've got mine set up so that all of these various file types get automatically moved into designated folders within my downloads folder. And man, I cannot overstate just how useful this is. And then speaking of files, if you're ever attempting to share a file with someone that is too large, then FFShare is the app for you. When you go to share your media of choice, all you need to do is share it to FFShare first, and that'll then compress your media with hardly any impact on quality. It also removes exif tags, which is great for privacy. 
All right, continuing on with our utility-based apps, and next up is Lumo Light, which is a beautifully designed app that packs in some really handy features related to your phone's torch. So you can adjust your torch's intensity if your phone supports that feature under the hood. You can also set it to turn off your phone's torch after a set amount of time, or to blink your torch at different beat per minute rates. And then it also allows you to use your phone's screen as a torch, which you can then customize to different colors and intensities. Following that is one of my all-time favorite apps, LocalSend. It's essentially an open-sourced version of QuickShare, but where QuickShare has been pretty spotty over the past little while, LocalSend has been flawless. And as long as it's installed on the devices that you want to share between, then it'll do exactly what it says on the tin. But the best part is that it works on both iOS and Android, as well as Windows and Mac. After that is an app called Tidy. And if you're someone without a Pixel phone who wishes you could use the AI features found within the relatively new Screenshots app, well, this app lets you do basically that. When you first launch the app, it'll index every photo on your device. And this can take quite some time to do so depending on how many photos you have on your phone. But once complete, you can then use the app to type in any description of an image that you might be looking for. So let's say this one I prepared earlier that says boy on sand with yellow spade. And if I then tap to search, there we go. Any photos matching those keywords, they'll show up. The app also lets you perform image to image searches, which will search for visually similar images stored on your phone. NetGuard is another utility-based application that lets you block specific apps on your phone from accessing the internet. So whether there's an app that chews up stacks of data in the background or you want to block ads in your favorite game, well, you can use NetGuard to select those apps and then completely stop them from being able to access the internet. And that's it, but it's a super underrated tool that is well worth checking out. And then finally, for our utility-related apps is Shizu Tools. And this is an app that unlocks a bucket load of handy Shizuku-related features. And among a bunch of options, my favorites are the audio-related tools. The first of which is this mixed audio tool that lets you play audio from multiple apps at the same time. And the second and even better option, in my opinion, is this Sound Master tool, which lets you control how loud or quiet the audio output is on an app-by-app -app basis. All right, three quarters down the list, and next up is Namida. And this is an offline music player app that has gotten quite a bit of coverage on my channel over the past year, but that's because of how dang good it is. It's got a beautiful UI with a bunch of these super slick animations, and it also comes with this really handy video playing functionality built in, and that's on top of its core feature set, playing music stored locally on your phone. Well worth a look if you're in the market for a new music player application. And then staying on the topic of music related apps, and next up is one called Rodomi. And if you've ever tried to open a music link that redirects to a music app that you don't actively use, well then this is the app for you. So for example, here's a link to a song shared via the YouTube music app, but if I don't have that app installed, when I tap on it, it'll launch this new bottom sheet interface provided by Rodomi. It'll show me all of these other music streaming services, and I can then tap whichever one I do use, so Spotify, for example, and Rodomi will intelligently open that song in the music app that I do use. Then we have Breezy Weather, and if you're looking for an open source weather app to try out, well, this one is one of the better options available. It's got an incredible design, it's packed to the brim with weather information, and has a stack of these super clean widgets that you can add to your home screen as well. Second to last is an app called FadCam, which actually lets you record videos without the camera app needing to be open. So let's say you wanna use your phone as a dash cam with Google Maps open. Well, you can just open the app, hit start, and you can then close the app, open up Google Maps if you like, or even turn your phone's display off, and the app will continue recording video using your phone's camera the entire time. Once done, you just jump back into the app and hit stop, and there you go, your video will be saved and ready to go. And so finally today, we have Chrono, a really beautifully designed clock application that is a neat open source alternative to the stock clock apps that your phone provides by default. And all the basics are covered. You can create alarms, view world clocks, create timers and start a stopwatch. But then for me, on top of the fact that it's open source, it's also the app's incredibly clean design that makes it so good, plus the extensive amount of customizations that you can make within the app settings. But that's it, 20 amazing open source applications that I reckon are worth checking out in some way, shape or form in 2025. If you yourself have any other recommendations for free and open source apps that you love using, definitely let everyone know down in the comments below. But aside from that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.